Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss and I'm here at Boston's Museum of Science with Dr. Daniel Davis, who's going to talk to us about lightning and why lightning is lightning shaped. Hi, Dan. Hello, Adam. So I want to find out about lightning and its shape, but I can't really get away with standing here next to you in front of this thing without talking about the fact that we're in front of a giant lightning machine. That's right. Uh, we're privileged to have the world's largest open-air Van de Graaff generator that was built by its inventor, Professor Robert Jameson Van de Graaff, who started work on this machine in 1931 and used it as a particle accelerator. So these are the same Van de Graaff generators that we all had in high school physics and we zapped each other with, but a lot bigger, right? Absolutely. It's 37 feet tall. So this thing, I've seen it run. It's amazing. The lightning bolts that it makes look like real lightning bolts, and they kind of branch and change direction and everything else just like real lightning bolts and you want to tell us why they do that, right? Absolutely. So they're uh, driven by the same electrical forces. They're just about a, a factor of a thousand smaller is all. And they move through the air in a path that, you know, you'd think that when you want to connect electrically one place to another, the best thing to do is move in a straight line. But lightning bolts are anything but straight. So how do they get the shape that they are? Well, a loose analogy is that they're, they're bent and forked for many of the same reasons that rivers are bent and forked. Now, we all know that uh, you know, water uh, you know, seeks its lowest level, uh, but it does so not always in a straight line. So gravity is the force that's guiding a river as it flows down through rivers and valleys, but it doesn't go in a straight line to the sea. Instead, whenever it hits local obstacles, it'll make bends and kinks, and if there's two you know, seemingly equitable paths, then it may fork. And for a similar reason, uh, electrical force forces uh, that drive a lightning bolt, um, they are made by electrical charge. Now, what's difficult about visualizing that is that we can't see electric charge. Uh, but when it's separated in the thunderstorm, uh, it makes uh, uh, different, different regions that create an electrical landscape that has peaks and valleys and slopes that drive the path of the lightning uh, uh, flash. And uh, although it may generally head towards a region of opposite charge, uh, it doesn't necessarily do so in uh, a, a straight line due to these uh, irregularities in the air or irregularities in the charge distribution that's driving it. So just like water in a river may flow around a hill or flow around an area of stronger sediment, pieces of rock, those kind of things, the lightning bolts, if we were to take a picture of the air with an electromagnetic camera, you'd see all those same kind of peaks and valleys and they'd be navigating just like a river does. Precisely. We actually have a trick for us, kind of like the one everybody knows where you see a lightning flash and you count and the longer it takes to hear the thunder, the farther away that lightning bolt struck. There's actually one about the length, so if you see one of those really long lightning bolts, you can get an estimate for how long the, the lightning bolt itself was. Absolutely. It takes sound about uh, five seconds to travel one mile. Um, so if you actually count the dur duration of the thunder from when you first hear it to when you stop hearing it and then divide by five, that gives you a rough estimate of the length of the lightning channel. And it often surprises people that uh, lightning can be you know, tens of miles long. So count both the amount of time it takes from the flash to the thunder, but then keep counting through the thunder and you get an idea when you divide by five for both, how far away the lightning bolt struck and how long the channel was. Absolutely, and the important thing with that is, is that very often you'll find that the channel was longer than it is further away from you, which means that uh, it could have very easily struck in your location. So when you hear the thunder, you really should be in a safe place uh, like a car or a house, uh, uh, but you should not be outside on a, a golf course or uh, in a boat or what have you. Well, interesting information about the shape of lightning bolts, but certainly useful information about how long they are. Thanks, Dan. My pleasure, Adam.